ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اجارني الله واياكم من النار all praise and thanks belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of allah be upon his servant and final messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as to what follows my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam in surah al-a'raf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all of humanity all of mankind he begins this ayah by saying ya bani adam la yaftinannakum ash-shaytan kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah ينزع عنهما لباسهما ليريهما سوءاتهما انه يراكم هو وقبيله من حيث لا ترونهم ان جعلنا الشياطين اولياء للذين لا يؤمنون this is an important ayah allah azza wa jalla is addressing the son of adam he begins by saying ya bani adam what is the warning in this ayah allah azza wa jalla said la yaftinannakum ash-shaytan don't you dare be tricked and deceived and misguided by the shaytan kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah don't be deceived by the shaytan in the same manner he deceived your parents adam and hawa and as a result when they fell into his trap they were removed from the paradise and what happened as well yanzi'u anhuma libasahuma because they fell into the deception of a shaytan as a result their clothing came off and they saw each other's privates and this was the first time it happened in the history of mankind what does it mean that allah azza wa jalla says do not be deceived by a shaytan in the same manner he deceived your parents this is the question how did the shaytan deceive adam and hawa so that if we learn and we notice and we see it and we observe it we're able to keep away from it in the same manner as shaytan deceived adam and hawa He does the same thing to mankind. When you are equipped with this knowledge, when you know how the shaytan deceives mankind and makes them fall into his trap and tempts them towards sin and evil, when you know how he does it, you've got great knowledge. You are able now to keep away from his plan and his deception. Very simple. How does he do it? In two words. Zayyana a'malahum. He decorates, he decorates the evil. He beautifies the sin. This is exactly what he does. So look at the story of Adam and Hawa. As they are in the paradise, roaming freely, eating whatever they like, a shaytan came to them. Allah Azza wa Jal had told Adam, prohibited him from a specific tree. لا تقرب هذه الشجرة There was a tree in the paradise. This is haram. Do not come near it, ya Adam. Don't touch it, don't eat from it, don't even come near it at all. And the paradise is huge, it's vast. Enjoy wherever you like, but this tree don't come. Look how the shaytan gets him there. And this is the first time mankind would be exposed to the deception and the trick of a shaytan. It has never happened before this. So Adam has no guidance in terms of what the shaytan does to mankind. Like we have now We're learning from his story. He said to Adam alayhi salam, as Allah azza wa jal mentions in the Quran, 
هل أدلك على شجرة الخلد وملك لا يبلى؟ This is how he tricked him. He said to him, Shall I point you to a tree that is called شجرة الخلد وملك لا يبلى? This is the eternal tree. If you are to eat something from it, you will live in here forever. And it would be a source of mulk in la yabla. It would be a source of everlasting kingdom. You will never ever leave this place. You will have permanent residence in the paradise. Look how he decorated the sin. This is something mankind desire. Permanency. I want to live. And I want to live long. And I want to be rich. And I want to have the treasures of the world. This is something Allah instilled within us, right? Which then Allah Azza wa would give mankind when he puts them in the paradise forever. But the idea is this. He came to Adam and he beautified a dirty, nasty, evil, wicked sin. He beautified it. If you go there, you will live forever in the paradise. Bit by bit, فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورِ And he ended up there and he ate from this tree. Obviously the clothing came off and as a result, it was a reason for why he was removed from the paradise. This is the nature of sins. The more you engage in sin, the further away you are from the paradise. For this is exactly what a shaytan does today to mankind. He decorates the sin. He beautifies the sin. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us, and he told us that at the end of time, and we see this today, that al-khamr yusammunahu bi ghayr ismihi. The sins will be given names other than their original names. Al-Khamar, alcohol, it's called and referred to as spirits. In Arabic, in the Arabic world, it's called mashrubat ruhiyah. Spirits, heck, to deceive mankind. That this is, even though Allah called it khamar, look how difficult the word is in itself. Just pronouncing the word already indicates that this is something condemned. Khamar. So it's called spirits among the people. And the shaytan has deceived them to think that Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, go to your bar, drink this khamar, and this is uplifts your spirit. It removes the stress away from your life. Same thing with cigarettes and vapes and shisha and tobacco and all of this. A shaytan has decorated it for the people. Are you stressing in your life? Are you facing severe calamities? Are you facing severe financial difficulties? Come, hang out with some people. And this is a stress relief. Come relieve your stress with this matter. Ha'ak shaytan has decorated it. Meanwhile, fundamentally, this is a sin hated by Allah. Haram. But the shaytan has decorated it. And wallah, if people resort to this matter of smoking in a time of calamity, then you should know the worst and absolutely worst thing you could be doing in a time of calamity is to sin. Because you're not reading Allah's message correctly upon you. In a time of calamity, stress-free, something that would have given you relief would have been two rak'at you prayed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sure, a shaytan decorates the sin and makes the good seem very difficult and burdensome upon the believer or upon anyone of mankind. لا يفتننكم الشيطان as zina today is referred to as personal service. Drugs and what they are, they have names. Ice, speed, ecstasy. Look at these names. Ecstasy means happiness. How did it go from drug to a good, positive name? And ice, it sounds like something refreshing. And speed, it sounds like something is going to give me energy and some motivation. Heck, this is the nature of a shaitan. He takes al-haram, he decorates it, and he gives it some name. And he brings it out to the people. Come towards it. But the believer should be careful. Should be aware. Should be smart. Should know the sin for what it is. No matter how many names it's painted with. And given, it doesn't change the fact that it is a sin. Subhanallah. This is the effect of sins. When Adam alayhi salam approached the tree, and he, he didn't even eat from it. He only tasted. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ They tasted only. He pulled out something from the tree and he put it onto his teeth and he just tasted. Tasted. 
just the fact that he tasted something from the tree, his clothing came off. And their shames, their privates were exposed to each other. Yani, the idea is that when Allah Azza wa Jal loves the believer, the believer might approach a sin. But Allah's love for him, he'll keep him away from the sin. He will not enjoy the sin. The believer is not supposed to enjoy the sin. What enjoyment is there in just tasting a fruit from a tree? He didn't even chew it. He didn't even swallow it. He didn't even, his body wasn't even nourished by what he had tasted. Just the ta- bas. And then the punishment came. The punishment came. The clothing came off. Allah Azza wa loves the believer. He keeps him away from the sin. And this is the attitude. When you find yourself at the doors of a sin, when you find, find yourself, you have approached the sin. If it was a cigarette, it should be your, and then throw it. Like Adam, ذاق and he threw it. This is how it is. The believer should always be aware and careful. When you've approached the sin, knowing it's a sin, don't spend too much time there. Don't allow your body to enjoy it. Don't allow your body to be nourished and nurtured by this sin. The believer should run away immediately. Keep away from it. And seeking Allah's forgiveness was still far. If that's the case, alhamdulillah, you're doing good. This is exactly what the believer should be. يَنزِعُ عَنْهُمَا لِبَاسَهُمَا لِيُرِيَهُمَا سَوْآتِهِمَا Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Verily, Allah gives us a fact. He says, الشَّيْطَان and his entire army, they see you in a way where you cannot see them. This means that we are always on the radar of the shaytan. He knows us. He knows what our weaknesses are. He knows what we are ignorant about. He knows the sins. He decorates them and he makes them tempting for mankind. This is him. He studies. He studies mankind. How am I going to reel him into the sin? A shaytan, the first thing on his agenda, how am I going to make the believer a disbeliever? If he can't get you from there, how am I going to get him to fall into innovations? If he can't, how am I going to bring him to a major sin? If he can't, how am I going to get him into a minor sin and remain persistent upon it? If I can't, how am I going to get him to engage in al-makruhat, the disliked matters? If he can't, how can I keep him away from al-mustahabbat, recommended matters? If he can't, and you have two options of good, and one is more rewarding than the other, he'll try to make you do the one that is less rewarding than another option you had. Hack! With every single person, he has a story and an agenda and a plan. And you and I need to be careful. إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ He studies you. He knows you well. مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُ You cannot see him. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, how do we defeat him? How do we get rid of him? Al-ulama, rahimahumullah, had something beautiful. He said, you better all know that if he can see you and you cannot see him, then know that Allah can see him and he cannot see Allah. So seek Allah's help against him. How? By saying, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim By reciting, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Especially, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ أَلَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ Read it three times in the morning and read it three times in the evening and read it three times before you sleep and read it once after every salat. Look how many times we're reading Surah An-Nas in one day. This is Allah's love for the believers. He wants them to be protected from a shaytan. And you will never be protected unless you seek protection from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the idea. This is the importance. Who read Surah An-Nas today three times in the morning? Who reads it once after every salat? and three in the afternoon, and three before you sleep. If not, Bismillah, start. You'll find the huge effect it'll have in your life. You'll find that the shaytan's waswas would begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller in your life. Until bi'ithnillah, you have control, and you overcome him, and you overpower him. إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ We verily made the devils allies to those who do not believe. How does a person become an ally to the shaytan? How does a person become a friend of the shaytan? Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, it's a three-step solution. Listen to this. Very simple. Number one, a person commits a shameless, immoral, 
vulgar, evil deed, fa'alu fahishatan, they commit the sin. Next stage, this is the friend of a shaitan, this is what he does. After he commits the sin, he's engaged in it. Qalu wajadna alayha aba'ana. He says, we found our forefathers doing this. Yani he normalizes it. It's normal. Everyone's doing it. Our forefathers did it. Society is doing it. Communities are doing it. My neighbor is doing it. My friends are doing it. My family does it. What's the problem? Why is it wrong? Everyone's doing it. And then the worst of the worst is the third stage. He ascribes the sin to Allah. He says Allah commanded us to do this. It's halal. He makes it religion and deen. Look at the example. I give you an example of, of a homosexuality. It was haram. Well, initially, everyone would assume as it's something evil, something corrupt. But when people began to engage in it, فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً They begin to engage. At the beginning, it was silent. It was covered. It was under the, under the doors. Then, وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا آبَاءَنَا People are doing it. Begin to normalize now. Everyone's doing it. And then these communities from around the world hold hands with each other to the point where they make a whole banner for themselves a rainbow flag, this is us, wherever you are in the world, come put your hands with us. It's beginning to become normal and justified. And then what happens? Allah loves this. Allah loves equality. Ma'ad Allah, did you see on rainbow flags written, Allah loves equality? See what happened? What happened? It went from illegal to legalized. Allah commanded this. Is this what Allah commanded? These are the friends of a shayateen. Whereas the believer might do a sin. He might commit a sin. Allah would say in Surah Ali Imran, He's speaking about upright, sincere believers. When they commit a sin, you know what happens in the next stage? That's the believer. That's the difference between a friend of Allah and a friend of a shaytan. The friend of the shaitan commits the sin, normalizes it, and ascribes it to Allah. Ma'ad Allah, he disbelieves in that case. But the believer commits a sin, perhaps could fall into a sin. But ذكر Allah immediately. He says, Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, Allahumma tub alay, fastaghfiru li dhunubihim. And as a result, Allah Azza wa Jal would forgive them. This is, this is the plan. This is the plan of a shaitan. How many things were illegal? wherever in the world, and slowly, slowly they become legal. Suicide was a crime long time ago. Now there's something called assisted suicide. We'll help you. Abortion was illegal. Now, anytime you want, you can abort. Anytime you want, no problems. Even if the child is healthy, no problem. It's legal. How? Heck, how? Only by following the path of the shaitan, such a person gets himself involved in something like that. For you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to realize this, observe this, and say that Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa has kept you safe from this. And continue to ask Allah protection من الشيطان الرجيم. And that He protect you and your families. Wallahu amarana biha. The response is very simple. قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ We see all this evil in society. Those that are learned, those that are sincere, those that are upright Muslims and honest. Well, how do, you, how do you face all this? Very simple. قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Come out with these words. Now Allah is teaching us what to do. Just say, Allah لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Allah doesn't command immorality. What are you people doing? Saying that this is legal and this is legal. Allah doesn't command this. لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ أَتَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Are you people speaking ignorantly on behalf of Allah? Then the problem is ignorance. People began to legislate on their own accord because of their ignorance. قُلْ أَمَرَ رَبِّي بِالْقِسْطِ Then go and say to the people, My Lord has commanded justice. And everything of the good deeds is justice, is قِسْط. وَأَقِيمُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدِ And face the qibla when you pray. وَدْعُوهُ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And pray. Why was as-salat mentioned? Because nothing will save you in these times other than your ibadah. Nothing will save you in the times of fitter and corruption other than your ibadah, especially as salat so Allah Azza wa concludes this whole passage with the deed of a salat وَأَقِيمُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ وَدْعُوهُ Call out to him مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ with sincerity كَمَا بَدَأَكُمْ تَعُودُونَ The end of the day, two parties فَرِيقًا هَدَى وَفَرِيقًا حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الضَّلَالَةِ 
There is a party that Allah Azza wa Jal has guided. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us. And another party, Haqqa alayhimu dalalah, written upon them is misguidance. Why? إِنَّهُ مُتَّخَذُ الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Because they took a shayateen as friends for theirs besides Allah. That's a calamity. That's a calamity when you befriend the shaytan and you walk down his path and you abandon the path of Allah. And worse than this calamity is the last two parts of this ayah. وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And all along, they believe they are guided. They believe they're the ones that are right and everyone in the community is wrong. And as a result, it puts pressure upon the righteous in the community to actually do their job and get up and fight the corruption and the evil. Continue to speak about it. Never, ever, ever normalize evil and corruption in your house and in society. The believer has this role, must play this role on earth. At the end of the day, this is why prophets were sent. This is why prophets were sent. Because there was too much facade on the earth. And their job was to reform and fix things. Bring a tawheed. Teach the people, la ilaha illallah. Teach the people the goodness. And the most important people you're supposed to teach are your own children and your own family in the house. If everyone did his job, bi-ithnillah, generations to come, will have goodness upon the earth. Will have goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his barakat and his blessings upon us, bi-ithnihi ta'ala. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد هذا وصل وسلم ورحمكم الله على خير البرية وأزكى البشرية محمد بن عبد الله صاحب الحوض والشفاعة فقد أمركم الله تعالى بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه وأيها بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا أقيموا صفوفكم وصدوا الخلل اعتدنوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى 
صحف صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحب على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله